Hello, it's Thursday. So today we are going to be making something that has to be one of the most requested patterns I've had on this channel. And that is a bearded dragon. Let's get into it. Okay, let's talk tools and materials. So for today's project, you're going to need eight ply 100% acrylic yarn. Now I'm going to be making a two-toned lizard today, but you could easily get away with just one color as well. You're also going to need a pair of 20 millimeter safety eyes, your 3.5 millimeter hook, pins and needles, scissors, and some stuffing. But that's it. Do you want to sit there? I'm more of a head lizard, okay. A written version of today's pattern will be sent out to my patrons and will also be made available on my Etsy, and I will leave links to both in the description down below for anyone who is interested. I'm sure you all can see how chaotic my desk was at the moment. <laughs> I need to take a day and just reorganize it. So we start our unshaven friend by making his base piece, which is made in this beige on my original here. Now it does not include the beard. The beard is a different piece that we attach just to give you the flexibility of having a shaven lizard as well. So this base piece starts at the tip of the nose. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six. And I'm using a nice bright yellow for my base piece, just because for this particular lizard, I've been leaning towards having the stronger color on the bottom and the paler color on top. We're then going to work six increases to bring us up to 12 stitches around. Then row three is two single crochet, and then three single crochet all into the same stitch. Like so. We're then going to work two repeats of three single crochet and then three single crochet into the same stitch. So there is our first repeat and we're going to do that again. and then just a single crochet to finish off the round. So your row should be 18 stitches around and we've laid the base here for his nice triangle head. So you should now go ahead and work up the next six rows, which will bring us up to our widest point for this piece, which is 38 stitches around. You'll note that some of those rows are a mix of decreases and increases. And all that's doing is bringing a little bit of shape to the top of his head and to really just exaggerate the size of his jaw. And as per usual, I would encourage you to stop after every round and count and just make sure you have the right number of stitches. And there we are at the end of row nine. So don't be alarmed if yours is looking a little wonky. This is a complicated knots pattern after all, which requires you to trust the process. Hey. So moving into round 10, we start with seven single crochet. We're going to use this row to start pulling in that jaw. It's just now occurred to me that there are no color changes in this pattern, so huzzah for that at least. So then we have a single crochet three together. Now there are two ways of doing this stitch and I normally only ever show the invisible version, but I'm going to show both today. So method A is the invisible version uh, and that's how I normally do these as well. So the way that works is we insert our hook through the front loops of the next three stitches, yarn over, pull up a loop, through all three of those front loops, should leave you with just two loops on your hook, yarn over and finish off your stitch. So there is the decrease. Now I'm going to frog that and do it the other way as well. So the other way, which I think is considered like the standard way of doing things is potentially a little bit easier for someone who's a little bit earlier in their crochet journey. So how I would do it the other way is I insert my hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then insert my hook into the third stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you'll see there I've got four loops on my hook. I then just yarn over and pull through all four. And so that also can act as your decrease. Now the reason I prefer invisible ones is I think they sit a little bit tighter and a little bit flatter. Whereas I think the standard way of doing things 
can cause sort of slight bulges. It's not, not a big deal, and I do think it all comes down to personal preference. I just prefer the invisible method. So you can now just carry on and finish off row 10. Watch out for those single crochet three togethers. They are peppered through the remaining rows. So we are at the end of row 10. So what you can see there is what will be the base of his eyebrows and the corners of his jaw starting to form. So row 11 kind of takes it one step further in locking that shape in. So we start with a decrease, then four single crochet, Then we're going to work three single crochet three togethers, one after the other. Like so, see how that's created this little pocket in your work as it's decreased very, very quickly. Then four single crochet along the underside of the chin. Then we're going to do another three single crochet three togethers. One, two, and three. Then four single crochet, decrease, and a final single crochet to finish off the row. So after all of that, your stitch count should be down to just 21 stitches. Yay, I love it when I love it when it counts the way it's supposed to. So row 12 is then going to bring us down to our narrowest point of just 15 stitches around. Like so. Now at this point you can stop and stuff your head a little bit. And we are going to be employing our usual method of tearing our stuffing into cotton wool ball size puffs. And then just adding them into the head one little puff at a time, making sure that it's tucked into all of the corners. Because after putting that shaping in, it would be a shame if we lost it. There we go. So that is what your piece should currently look like from all sides. Right, so that is the finished foundation for his head. And from here, we're going to continue out and form the main flat disc of his body. Now, I have designed my lizard specifically with shortened proportions lengthwise. If you wanted to make yours longer and slightly more on the realism side of things. You'll note that there are five rows of 30 single crochet in the next set of instructions. You can add additional rows of 30 single crochet in there to give him length and it won't mess with your shape. So you should work the next four rows to flare out into the body. Then five rows of 30 single crochet to give it some length, though you can add additional rows if you need. And then four rows to pull back into the base of the tail. So here we are at the end of row 25, and we're going to once again stop and stuff. Just make sure to stuff that stuffing all the way into all of the corners. So that's roughly the shape it should be. So now we're going to carry on and work down to the point of the tail. So now you should go ahead and work up the next 16 rows, remembering to stop every two to three rows to add additional stuffing. You can create a shorter tail if you would like to by simply skipping any row that is just single crochet. And what you might notice is that we haven't inserted any eyes. That's because I found that you can insert the eyes just through the top layer and it works out just fine. And it also just makes the positioning for everything a lot easier if you do. And finish off. How is that for yarn chicken? So at the very tip of his tail, you'll note that we still have a tiny little opening. We're going to take our remaining yarn and pull it through the front loops only of those remaining five stitches. Then pull it tight to close. It's kind of like a reverse magic ring. Then I'm just going to thread my hook up from further up in the tail and out close to the tip and tuck the remainder away inside like so. And there is our lizard. He's actually a very serviceable lizard shape for what he is. But what we do now is we create the top piece, which has a lot of his spikes on it, a beard piece, and a couple of front legs and a couple of back legs. So lots of stuff to get attached to this. Pop that to one side. 
Okay, so next up we're going to create this top piece. So this piece starts at the tip of his nose. And then as we work up, we use more picots than you'll be comfortable with, frank frankly, <laughs> to build up all the way down to the tip of his tail. Now, all the spines on this little guy are made with picots. So I would like you to go down to the comment section right now and leave your guesses as to how many you have to do to make one of these dudes. And I'll leave a counter on the screen somewhere that'll help us keep track. So I'm going to be using my pale yellow for this. And while this piece is largely worked flat, we're going to start with a magic ring of six. There we go. We're then going to work a single crochet, three increases, and then a single crochet. So we have not worked into all of the stitches from our magic ring. We have one left, but instead of working into it, we are going to chain one and turn our work. So we're working back into the stitches we just did. So we are going to work eight single crochet back across. Once again, working into every single stitch except for that last stitch of our magic ring. And we are going to chain one and turn again. So there we are at the end of row three. So the next three rows are essentially the same. We work some single crochet and some increases, finishing each row with chaining one and turning. So there we are at the end of row six. So the wrong side of the work is currently facing us. You should be able to tell that there's a little bit of a snout being built up there. So from here, the pain really begins. The row itself is fine, being just four single crochet, an increase, four single crochet, another increase, and then four single crochet to the end of the row. So the main difference is instead of chaining one to turn, we are going to picot and turn. And this is the first of many. So a picot for anybody who needs to know is you chain three, a standard chain that I expect to have to put my hook back through, but then I pull the next two really tightly like so. Then I just insert my hook back through that first chain and slip stitch into it. So there is our picot, and so now we can use that picot to turn the work. So there is his first little spine. Then for row eight, we are going to start working some picots into the row as well to form his little eyebrows, because they also have spikes. So we start with five single crochet. Then a picot exactly the same as we did at the end of the row. Then an increase. So the pico doesn't take up a stitch. Four single crochet across the top of the head. An increase. Another pico. So and then five single crochet down the other side. And we're going to pico and turn. So there's the end of row eight. Brings us to row nine. So that starts with five single crochet. Then we've got our little pico and you're going to want to make sure that your pico is always poke out on the right side of your piece. So we've got the wrong side facing us at the moment. So just make sure that we crochet in front of it in this case. We're then going to pico. Like so then identify the increase that is just after our pico from the and into the increase, you're going to put a single crochet. 
and then an increase. And so on and so forth to finish the row. Like so, so you can see there we've got two spiky little eyebrows forming. Just keep in mind that because we're working backwards and forwards in rows, each row you do is going to make it look like it's crooked in the opposite direction. <laughs> so try not to worry about that too much. So there we are at the end of row nine, and you can now carry on and work up the next 27 rows to finish off this top piece. Now, as you're making this top piece, remember, if you added additional rows to the base piece, you'll need to add those same number of rows to your top piece. And you would add those rows after row 22, where we're doing just a plain row of 20 single crochet across. And you can add as many rows of 20 single crochet as you need to. Then for row 36, we work our single crochet, our final pico, and we do turn the work back so we finish with the right side facing us. And we're just going to slip stitch into the top of that last single crochet and finish off. So this lumpy bumpy piece forms the top of your lizard. And on this blue, it looks like he's an aquatic lizard. Ooh. So this will basically fit over the top of your base piece so that he is no longer naked. Pop both of those pieces to one side. So the reason that we're doing the beard as a separate piece that we need to attach on is it gives the design a little bit more flexibility. Basically, you can leave it off and have it be a little bit more of an Australian horny devil instead of a bearded dragon. And it also means that you can pose the lower jaw in a more open position if that is what you prefer. So we're going to work our beards in the same color that we used for the base, which for me is this bright yellow. And we're going to start with a magic ring of six. Now, if you thought you were sick of picots before, oh boy, do I have news for you. So this piece has many picots, so we'll get the pico counter back up on the screen. We'll just see, see how many there is. Okay, so that is all once again at the tip of his nose, but technically it's from the underside. We are then going to work a single crochet, three increases, and then a single crochet. So just like when we made the top piece, we're going to leave that final stitch of our magic ring unworked. And instead we are going to chain one, and turn and work back into the stitches we just did. So row three consists of six repeats of a single crochet and then a pico. So we should all be very familiar with how to pico by now. But I did just want to add that if you find that you struggle with identifying where to work your stitches when you've got picots in your row, you should think about marking each of the single crochets as we go along, just because that will really help you with this particular piece. and then a single crochet to finish the row. Like so, so the wrong side is facing us, but we have six little points. We're then going to chain one and turn. And being careful to work just into the single crochets, we are going to work two single crochet, and then an increase. And just like with the top piece, I'm being careful to work this so that my picots all poke out on the right side of the work a single crochet, another increase, and then two single crochet to finish the row. And then chain one and turn. So that's what we look like at the end of row four. So row five, we've got some more picots to do. So it's eight repeats of a single crochet and then a pico. So once again, you can mark every single crochet stitch in the row if that makes it easier for you to identify them in the next one. So once again, we're at the end of the row, chain one and turn. So you'll see we've got a couple of layers of our beard built up there. So you're essentially just going to keep working that way backwards and forwards, working picots in one row and then increases in the next to build up the rest of his beard. Now I did only learn how to picot about a year and a half ago when we were making the Loch Ness Monster. 
I bet whoever mentioned it in the comments is regretting it about now if they're still watching. <laughs> and finish off. So there is his beard, and that lines up on the underside of his chin, roughly like that. We'll be a little bit more specific with it later, but you can basically pose it a little more open if you wanted, or shut the way we're doing today. So pop all that to one side. So the only pieces we have left to make are his front and back legs. So we're going to start with his front legs. And as you may have guessed, we are starting with a magic ring of six. Now I understand that I've taken some artistic liberties with the lengths of the toes in order to simplify this pattern down a little bit. Just know if you want to adjust the lengths of any of your toes, all you have to do is add additional chains and slip stitches to the toe that you want to be longer, and then carry on with the pattern as written, it won't impact it at all. And then in row two, we're going to be forming his little toes. So we're gonna start by chaining three. We're going to turn and then starting in the second chain from our hook, Put a slip stitch into each of the next two chains. That should bring us back to our base. Like so. We are then going to into just the front loop of the next stitch. Slip stitch. Like so. Now I am going to mark the back loop just with a bobby pin because we will use that in the next row and it's easier to find if you mark it now. And so there is his first finger. Next, we're going to chain four. So a longer one this time. Once again, we're going to turn, starting in our second chain. Okay, insert this audio for the first one. So we're going to chain four and turn. Now starting in our second chain from our hook, we're going to slip stitch into each of the chains down. So that should be three. Like so, and slip stitch into the next front loop around. Now you can mark that back loop as well, but I found if I just mark where the first one is, I can find the rest of them pretty easily, but mark it now if you need to. We're then chaining four again, turning, slip stitching three down those chains. And this time we are going to slip stitch into the same front loop that we stitched into last time. So those two fingers are both attached to the same front loop. So two more fingers to go. Chain four. Turn and three slip stitches down the chains. and slip stitch into the next front loop around. And last finger is another little one, so chain three. Turn, two slip stitches down. And slip stitch into the next front loop around. So there are his little finger claws. And then to finish the round, we're going back to working through both loops and we're just going to work two single crochet. Like so. So there we are at the end of row two and that's what the, the back of that looks like. So you should be able to see, starting from our first marked one, the four back loops that we're going to use in the next row and then the two single crochet that finish the round. So for row three, we're working six single crochet around. We're going to fold our toes forward and work our first stitch into that marked back loop. So there is our first one. We're then going to work three more in those three back loops that we didn't use in the previous round. Two and three. So that looks like that. And then Working once again through both loops, we're going to finish that round by working two single crochet into the two single crochet that we did at the end of the last row. Like so. So that is now the palm of his hand. That's his wrist that we've just built. And you'll see that we've started building up the arm a little bit. 
So from here you can go ahead and work up the next seven rows of your arm. If you pay attention to where we're putting our increases and decreases, you'll see that we're shaping a little elbow in there just to give it a bit of a bend. So that's the end of row 10. And now we are going to just stuff it a little bit. Like so. And then we're just gonna work our final round, which is two repeats of a decrease and then two single crochet. Like so. Finish off. And we're going to use our remaining yarn, same way we did for the base piece, to just close off that little opening. So there is his first little foot, and you are going to need two of those. Like so. Hop those to one side. Okay, so our last remaining piece is our back legs. So the first four rows of the back legs are the same as the front, so you can start by working that up. Okay, so there we are at the end of row four, with the ankle and the foot all worked up. So now we're going to continue on and build up the rest of the leg. So we start with two rows of two single crochet, an increase, two single crochet, and a decrease. And you'll note that these rows are basically the opposite of what we did for the front leg, and that's because we want the knee to bend forward, where we want to the elbow to bend backwards. Like so. So for row seven, we're going to do an increase, five single crochet, and an increase, then four single crochet, a decrease, and three single crochet, bringing our round back down to eight. And you're then going to do three rounds of eight single crochet for a combined total of 24 stitches. Then we're going to just stop and stuff. Same way we did for the front leg. Not too tightly, just enough so that it can hold its shape. We're then going to work our final row, which is two repeats of a decrease and then two single crochet. And finish off. Once again, use your remaining strand of yarn to close off the opening in the top, like so. And there is your leg. Now, as part of our assembly process, we are going to bend this leg down into a more scrunched position. So don't worry too much right now if yours is looking very kind of long and straight. And you are going to need two of these as well. Pop them to one side. Okay, so now that we've made all of our pieces, the time has come to assemble. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if we're only about halfway through the video at this point, because assembly for this guy is a little involved. Where did I, where did I put your other eyeball, dude? There you are. So we're going to start by positioning his beard. Thank you, Monsieur Tot. So I'm grabbing my base piece and identifying the top versus the bottom. Now the jaw is your biggest indicator of this. So on the top, it sort of slopes smoothly down into the back, whereas on the bottom, it kind of indents in and out. So what we're going to do is grab our beard and we're going to line up the center of the starting magic ring of our beard with the center of the starting magic ring on our head. Like so, pin that a little bit more securely. Then we're going to take our back corners of our beard and just curve them up and around the jaw the longest end of the beard should tuck neatly into that little groove for the neck, just like so. So there he is. Now he is an unshaven lizard. Pop that just off to one side for a moment and grab your top piece. And we're going to position our eyes. So the eyes go through just the top piece. And what you're going to do is find your starting magic ring and count back to row six. And we're going to pop our eyes into that row so that they are roughly one stitch width away from the edge and the top edge of them lines up almost exactly with that first picot. Follow that row around and do the same thing on the other side. Now before we snap our backs on, 
I am just going to lay this over the top of our body and make sure that they are still going to sit evenly when they have the form underneath them. I am pretty happy with mine, so I am just going to snap my backs on now. I'll see if I can get you some good clicky noises too. You ready? Ah, and again. Oh, okay. Well, we got one lot of clicky noises, which is something. So your eyes are now attached. Now, if you were going to stitch some markings onto your back, I would recommend doing it similar to how we did for our leopard gecko, which is just working the yarn in between the stitches. And you could do that now. For my other little guy, I did this afterwards, but you could absolutely add any stitch markings you wanted to at this point in the process. I've decided not to add any to this particular one just because it's not part of the official pattern. So now we're going to line our top piece up on our body. And yes, we are lining it up over the top of pinned pieces. And there is, there is just a process to making sure everything's lined up correctly. So we are once again going to identify the center of our starting magic ring. And we're going to line it up over the top of the starting magic ring of our beard and our base piece because they're already lined up. So all three starting magic rings should line up over the top of each other. Didn't I do it for you? So just like that. And we are then going to line the narrow bit where we've clearly narrowed in for the back of the head up with that dip in the neck. And you're going to want to pin that in place, stretch it a little as needed. And then it's just a case of lining the rest of it up down the body to the tail. And I do want to just point out that the, our top piece does not extend all the way to the tip of the tail. The spikes stop about two thirds of the way down. So there we go. That is roughly where we want all of that to be positioned. The face <laughs> will be finessed a little bit later because we will be folding the head back to sew the beard on. This is just to give us a better idea of where the body goes. So before we sew anything on, we actually have to pin the legs on as well because you may need to tuck the top edge of your shoulder and hip joints up under this top piece. So we just pin everything on, make sure everything fits where we want it to be. And then we work out how to attach everything. So find your arms. Now your arms are the ones with the elbows. So the, the, they bend backwards. Both of your arms are the same, so grab any one of them and just tuck into that space between the head and the body. As I've mentioned, you'll note that I've tucked mine sort of just under where the spikes on the top piece sit. Turn it over, do the same thing on the other side. Check to make sure they're roughly even. And also check, <laughs> sorry, the look on his face right now. Like, what? Um, <laughs> and just check to make sure that we're not tilting him sideways as is something that I do pretty often <laughs> but I'm pretty happy with where those ones are and now the back legs are going to go into the gap between where the body is and where the tail is And you can check at this point if your lizard stands up, which mine does, but we are going to scrunch these legs down a little bit. So it's okay if his butt's a little high at the moment. What you're basically checking is to make sure that all four feet touch the ground in some regard, just to make sure that he is uh, a balanced lizard. No one likes an unstable dragon, am I right? All right, so with all of that sussed, we're going to start the sewing. And the first thing I'm going to do is unpin the top from the tip of the nose and fold it backwards. And this is what I mean about saying you can have this be an open mouth if you want. Yeah, uh, so fold that backwards. I'm going to just pin that back so it doesn't flap forwards again. I'm also just going to remove my front legs too, just because of how far back my beard extends. Bit of a shame because I don't like taking those ones off necessarily at this point. And we're going to take a little of our bright yellow and just sew down around the edge of the beard. You don't have to be super neat with this particular piece uh, because all of its edges will be covered up by other pieces. So I've been thinking about the upcoming 24 hour challenge again. Uh, I've done it the last two years, so I feel like I should do it again this year, even though like, I'm getting old and it's getting harder. <laughs> uh, I thought it could be fun to try and do like the whole alphabet 
I don't know if I've talked about this in previous videos. If I have, forgive me if I'm contradicting myself, but I've been just thinking about it again. And it's like trying to do 26 tiny little crochet in 24 hours could be a lot of fun because I reckon I could do, I reckon I like it to be a push, but the whole thing is supposed to be a challenge. So trying to do 26 little minis, like really little minis, like minimum number of stitches to communicate to the animal and just try and get through the whole alphabet. And then just try and get through the whole alphabet in 24 hours. Uh, I feel like it's a, it's a possibility. The only thing that might complicate that is if you guys then want all 20, like if I make 15 of them and you guys might want patterns afterwards, which is, you know, very flattering and all, but I, do I then want to spend weeks doing nothing but the mini patterns? So I don't know. It might, depending on how the video goes, it might come with a carte blanche that, uh, patterns won't be released if I do it go that way. The other option is to try and just do like one really big cool thing, but then 24 hours is not a lot of time for one big cool project. So, so I'm not, I'm just, I'm not done thinking about it yet. <laughs> so there we are. I'm now just going to take my support pins out from inside the head, fold it back forwards and line up those magic rings again. So into total disgruntled Kermit face. And this time we are going to pin down around our sides as well. Same thing on the other side, making sure that we are completely covering the edge of that beard piece, which it should just do naturally, but I mention it just in case yours isn't. Right, at this point you might need to like adjust your eyes, and by that I mean if you give them a little twist they could work down inside the stitching of the base and sit a little flatter, or mine was like poking out at a weird angle, I just grabbed it and moved the stem so that both of them were pointing in the same direction, which is towards like the inner back. We are going to do some detail stitching to pull those in and, and shape his face a little bit later, but the idea right now is just get him looking in the same direction. He's a good little dinosaur right now. So next thing I'm gonna do is just pin my front legs back on, just exactly where we had them before. And this time what I'm going to do is we're once again going to unpin our top piece keeping it anchored at the tail and anchored at the head. And we're just going to fold these sides up. Like so. So you'll see that they've just, I've just pinned that along the back to give me full access to the leg joints. And I'm going to take some of my top color now and just stitch on around each of the shoulders. So the front legs are easy, just like so just secured around the shoulders but there is a little bit of a trick to the back legs so I am just going to start by doing the exact same thing sewing on around the hip joint like so so you don't need any pins anymore and you should remove all of the pins from this piece before we do the next step trust me when I tell you that between this lizard and the other lizard I have made so many blood sacrifices so please remove all of your pins before we do the next step so for the next step, I'm going to place one finger on the sole of his foot and one at his hip joint, poking the knee forward, squish his little leg in a little bit. Now you can stop and you can pin at this point, but I'm just going to poke my needle all the way down, all of the layers out through the bottom of the foot somewhere. Pull my yarn all the way through and keeping it nice and scrunched. I'm going to work a little stitch all the way back up to the top of the hip joint again. Like so. Now I'm going to work two stitches like that just to make sure it's really locked into place. And this is of course an optional step. You don't have to do this. It's just a, it's a pose for my particular beardy boy. So I'm just going to do the same thing to the other leg as well. Like so. Now, sorry guys, I have to dummy some of this footage because I accidentally forgot to hit record again when I was talking about the back. So we've still got this side undone though. Um, so now all we are going to do is fold our sides back down, just like so. And we're going to sew down around the entire edge. Now, as I sew mine, I'm going to be working my stitches at the base of where those picots are, not through the tips of the spikes because we want those spikes to sort of stick up, as you can see here, and give him a little bit more life and a little bit more texture. So I'm merely working my needle 
a little bit deeper into the piece than we normally would. And we're just going to work around the entire edge of the piece. Okay, so with that done, you could call yourself finished, but we are just going to do a little bit of shaping on the face to pull his eyes in a bit. And add some eyelids as well, because why not? So I'm just going to thread my needle through to the top edge of his eye here. So I like to leave a little end sticking out so I can tell I haven't pulled through too far. I'm going to work a small stitch, which I refer to as a locking stitch. Which establishes an anchor point on one side of the face. I'm then going to hold his eyes in slightly and thread my needle all the way through to the same point on the other side of his head. I don't want to pull it too tight, we just want it in a little bit. So it's just very slight and then we anchor it with a little stitch on this side as well. So that's his eyes adjusted in a little bit to shape kind of the ridge of his nose a bit. And I'm then just going to add some eyelids. So that's basically, I just layer strands of yarn over the top edge of each of his eyes. And I'm going to do two or three strands for his top eyelid. And then you can also add a bottom eyelid as well. It does give him kind of a squinty look. But it depends on the temperament of your particular bearded dragon friend. And I'm just going to thread it across and do the same thing on the other side. And just remember that the eyelids need to be brothers, not twins. <laughs> they don't have to match exactly, but try and get them looking close enough. Trim off and tuck in all of your ends. And there is your finished dragon. So there is our finished bearded dragon. I hope you had fun making him with me today. Let me know in the comments what you think of him. But otherwise, that's it for today. I will see you next week. Okay, bye.